Okay, we're, we're going to keep going on for, uh, throughout the day now, and I'd like to introduce uh, Vinay Narayan from uh, HTC back to the stage. Vinay. Hey, guys. Um, great to see a lot of you back at uh, VR ARA, or especially from the event that was here last year. Um, so, you know, there's so much questions about the industry. Is really the industry really taking off? Is there a lot of growth? And I think if you kind of just see the list of attendees and speakers and just even having a sold out crowd, I think there is definitely something going on. It's something definitely worth uh, talking about. Um, I know a lot of you guys here, but for those of you that don't know me, my name is Vinay. Um, I actually have a, a really great opportunity to work with our customers, developers, and partners, and to really work with them to help solve a lot of the pain points uh, for VR adoption, but also work with them to really define the future of immersive technologies. Um, so I guess when you say it out loud, it sounds like a really amazing job, which, which I do, but there's, I also have a really big uh, challenge, and that is how do I help the industry grow, um, and then how do I also drive tangible impact? So a lot of the things that we work on and terribly focus on is not so much the futuristic what-ifs, but is what's measurable, right? So what is things that are either driving ROI, um, what are the strategic partnerships that are necessary, or, or what are the major technological hurdles that, that, that exist? There's still a lot of technology opportunities that happen. So of course, then naturally, one of the questions I get quite a bit is, well, when is adoption at scale going to happen? Um, and that's a very logical question, right? So I think when we think about scale or adoption or mass consumer adoption, sometimes we think about so many headsets in consumers' homes. And while that may be a great future, there's actually that trend happening now. And that trend is not reflected in the number of headsets sold. Uh, but it's actually reflected in the number of times new consumers actually try uh, VR. And that's actually an LBE. And I can talk about it all day, or I can just show you um, a quick clip. Universal wants to be at the forefront of VR. We think this is an exciting new medium, and we think there's no better property than Jurassic World to do it with. This is a place that people have always wanted to go, but you can't really go there. But in VR, we can take you there virtually. Most people don't have this technology in their homes. So the thing we like about the Dave and Buster's relationship is that we're able to bring this really compelling experience into 120 markets around the country. We see this experience as essential to every location for Dave and Buster's. The great thing about the HTC Vive is that it's a very high resolution, very immersive headset. All of a sudden, I, I put on the vibe, buckled myself in, and I entered in a whole new world. Oh my God, oh my God. It doesn't matter where you're looking, you're, you're there. You are in the experience, you feel the dinosaurs around you, you feel that intensity. I was excited, I had adrenaline pumping through me. It's like all of a sudden, like this big dinosaur's mouth opens up right next to me. I'm about to be swallowed up by a dinosaur. You're gonna feel real threat. You're gonna see these dinosaurs in scale in relation to yourself. It's just an experience that we couldn't deliver to you in any other way. It's a really amazing experience uh, that you can experience actually at Dave & Buster's at uh, over 100 plus locations um, with uh, hundreds and thousands of demos that have already been completed. And so I think it's a great example of, uh, there, there's a lot of growth, a lot of investment uh, that's actually happening. Um, in fact, in the last year or so, we've had seen a lot of virtual reality firsts that are not always reflected in, in sales numbers. Over the past year or so, we've seen nationwide uh, de deployment of uh, major VR solutions for consumers and not just for enterprise. And the Dave & Buster's example is a great one of that. It's actually one of the largest investments of LBE in VR to date. And we've also seen major motion picture promotion through Ready Player One. And the Ready Player One activation is actually a really great one because it wasn't one that was done kind of at the end of a process. But you saw a global-wide implementation or deployment of, uh, of VR using actual um, motion picture assets. Uh, and we were able to not only do that in movie theaters, but in location-based VR arcades across the world, that consumers not only got a chance to see a great movie, but experience that actually in, in a virtual environment itself. And while we've seen thousands of, of uh, employees being trained in VR, this past year, Volkswagen also committed to train 10,000 of its own employees using VR. And that's a pretty significant commitment. And I think when you see major brands or even enterprise companies make an investment like that, it's because there is a, there's a very tangible and measurable impact to that. 
And I think, you know, we talk a lot about enterprise and partnerships, but that's really critical. Because right? one company can't really do it alone. And one of the, I think one of the subtle but small but really impactful achievements is for a lot of enterprise uh, partners, you can now buy a Vive as easy as you would buy a mouse. And while that seems pretty, pretty trivial, but realizing that there's an entire infrastructure in place and understanding that allows that to happen really kind of shows the deployment abilities for, for VR. And also, we saw a refresh of hardware this past year, not just with Vive, but some of our other competitors as well. And what does that really mean? Well, it means the market needs more, and they need specifics. Um, and with the Vive Pro, we saw a lot of that as well with uh, refresh in, um, in uh, resolution, as well as uh, larger tracking space and a lot more comfort and ergonomics. Why? Because people were using VR a lot. And also the really cool thing with the MLB Virtual Home Run Derby, you may or may not have heard about it, but it was actually a really major activation done by the MLB, and it actually trended so much that it was actually on Twitch's homepage. So you're seeing real activations that really impact consumers really come to life in this past first year. And of course, Hardware right now is king. Yeah, content's king, but you know what? Hardware is that platform, and it really is the tip of the iceberg. It is really where consumers are interfacing with the new pl platforms and new technologies for the first time. And so hardware is important. However, it's not the only thing or the only opportunity for growth, and we recognize that. We really do feel the biggest opportunity for growth for the industry, VR and AR, really is in platforms. And here are some examples, a little biased, of course, of some, some platforms that we feel are really helping for the adoption of VR that are being used across the board. And I'll get into some of these specifics a little bit more down, down the road. So what is a platform? I'm sure we all know the definition, but you know, when I look at kind of what, what, are, what is a platform in the terms that make, uh, matters to us, and that is, platform is really the ability for technologies to uh, have common set of values, to be able to grow, to be able to be extensible, so that they not only host the technology of today, but also can be built for technologies of tomorrow without having to reinvent the wheel. And all of these things are really important because platforms allow one thing, they allow scale to happen. So why do platforms matter? And that's essentially why I'm here to really talk about why platforms matter for the larger adoption of AR and VR. And that can be a moderately complex concept, right? We all have our different, different, different definitions, different priorities, so I'm gonna use a very simple analogy. When we think about the automobile industry, definitely a game changer. People understood that there's transportation things uh, and there's different aspects, but what we really realize is cars didn't happen overnight. Sure, we had a great example of a consumerized version of an automobile in the Model T, and the Rift and the Vive are very similar in that. They're a consumerized version of a technology that's, that's existed for decades. So now these components are available off the shelf and at scale. But before you saw more cars happen, you actually saw our tire industry pop up. You saw a road industry that needed to happen. You saw a service industry. All these different industries had to happen. Why? Because they really needed to create the platform for the ease of not just cars being created, but for ownership. And that's a really critical component for platform adoption and the reason for platforms. Uh, before consumers can really find a reason to own, uh, businesses need to know that there needs to be a future. Earlier, Frank and I were kind of, kind of joking around about what we've done for the wireless solution, but it, understand something very important to that. If we built a wireless solution that only worked for Pro and not for the existing Vive, which is there's tons out there in the market, what does that signal for all those that invest in the platform? It's not a platform. Um, and understanding that from the get-go and really working with partners that really get the long-term benefit and the investment needed is critical. And that's why you see such growth in even the level of attendees here today. There's definitely that movement happening. So what does that apply to us? What are the areas of platform that are really critical? I like to think of things kind of in frameworks or pillars. Uh, so that way when we see opportunities, we kind of know where they fit. And if we don't really see how uh, it kind of keeps us kind of focused in a particular place, but technology. So for platforms, technology is a key component. There's still a lot of technology work that needs to happen, whether it's foveated rendering, whether it's advanced optics, whether it's, whether it's uh, cutting the cord completely or having smaller form factors. Technology, actually, there needs to be a place where technology is also extensible. And sometimes in order to get there, you need partnerships, both implied and explicit. Uh, a lot of these problems are so big and so difficult to solve for, no one company can solve it for all of us. Yeah, a company can solve it for themselves, 
but really a partnership allows expertise of different areas, allows the R&D investments of different areas, but allows those changes to happen pretty quickly. So partnerships are really critical, big and small. Content is king. The ability to create content consistently, quickly, all are really important tools that are necessary for platforms and for a platform to be a valid platform. And content's nothing if you can't distribute it. So content distribution, the ability to take not just content that works on one platform or one headset, but that you can actually use in multiple places is also very critical. So when you look at kind of what are platforms and how, what are the key components for platforms for AR and VR, really look at it kind of in these, these kind of four kind of main areas. So why are we so excited for platforms? Well, I think a big reason is we've been excited. Um, HTC has actually been investing in this space for quite some time, but it was a little, a little early to talk about it, right? Um, I think we weren't quite ready as an industry. The use cases weren't quite there in, in scale as they are now. This past year has been a kind of a milestone year for the industry. When we released the Vive Pro, we made a headset that was actually targeted to a very specific group. They're for prosumers and for enterprise. That may seem a little early to do that, but both the, the previous version of Vive and the Vive Pro are actually performing really well in the market. So what does that really mean to us? That means the market's robust. The market is healthy and large enough and growing to actually have multiple customer segments. And, and that's a really critical component of that. Um, also, what we've seen in this past year, we've seen other headsets evolve. We've seen product portfolios evolve. Uh, with the Vive, for example, uh, we, have, uh, we have a prosumer headset. We have the previous gener generation of headset. And in certain markets, we also have an all-in-one headset. And we're not the only ones with a product portfolio. So you're seeing a lot of growth happening in the space from, from that standpoint. So here's how we've kind of seen platforms emerge. And I think what I want to go through here is really kind of talk about some of the specifics of some of the things that are happening that kind of embody those kind of four pillars that really make some of the things that may seem simple on the outside really kind of the platform investment. You've probably heard about the Vive Focus. It's an all-in-one headset, so it means you don't need a PC to be able to run it. Um, a big reason why this has been so critical is hardware can be complex. Yes, the best experiences are PC-based and will continue to be that way, PCs will always kind of be the Ferrari, if you will, um, of, of VR experiences. But it doesn't mean that's the only type of experiences. Sometimes you need um, a more smaller subset, less complex, whether it's for education, whether it's just for a smaller subset of VR. So what, it, what is really the Vive Wave platform? The focus is actually built on the Vive Wave platform. And that, and that platform really is a house for technologies. Earlier, I talked about the different technologies that the industry needs. And I also talked about no one company can really solve for it all. So with the Vive Wave platform, we know that our headsets may not have all the features you need. So that SDK, that platform, actually has tools built in that allow other software, or sorry, other technologies to be built on top of that. The Vive Focus may not have foveated rendering, but you know what? You may need that. And as a hardware OEM, you may need software to be able to do that. And partnerships are also really important. So with the Vive Focus, we've actually partnered with Qualcomm. And again, a major partnership like this is super important because you can't use old technologies for the solutions of tomorrow, right? And so with the Qualcomm chipset, they're optimizing what does it mean to actually power VR headsets, not just for content, but also six off tracking. And that's been a big departure between mobile-based headsets and what the true all-in-one headsets are. And of course, content is king. And one of the great things about content building on a platform if you build on uh, a Vive he or Vive Focus headset or the Vive Wave SDK, you can port that content to other headsets that use a Vive Wave SDK as well. And that's huge for content distribution. So you don't have to worry about, as an enterprise or a small developer or as a solutions provider, that if I'm going to build, if I'm going to invest in Vive Focus, but I, there's something better in six months, what then? And so distribution, the ability to create content once and deploy it, super important. So currently, it's not just the Vive Focus that uses the Wave SDK. We actually have multiple headsets out there in the market. Um, and in fact, I think there's a couple out here um, that actually use this as well. So what's next for us? Well, we're actually going to have 10 more headsets in the next 12 months that actually support this platform, so, uh, and which is actually really an amazing achievement, and not so much in the numbers, but the fact that 
all those things that's talked about now can actually be deployed across the board. And, and of course, with other technologies that we may not have invested in or even incorporated for, for some obvious reasons, that you can now kind of see that in other areas. So that scale is really comes from platforms. Partnerships and collaborations are super important as well. So we, we've kind of had some previous examples, but you know, the wireless example is such a critical one. It's such a simple solution, but it's such, a in, it's such a complex thing to do. There's been other types of wireless solutions out in the market, but none that's really worked with low latency. Um, I kind of tease a little bit about what happens when enterprises adopt VR. When enterprises adopt VR, it is as critical for them as a computer. So when your computer goes down or is infected with a virus or you have some sort of challenge with being able to use it or your network, it disrupts the business. Same thing with VR. So when we develop tools for our platforms, we have to make sure that it's robust enough so it doesn't disrupt the business. And the other thing about Intel, which is also really interesting, they're not just a hardware or chipset uh, partner. They're also, they have an immense software stack that really enables these uh, experiences to really come to life. And a great example of that is NVIDIA. Um, NVIDIA has been killing it in many industries. Um, whether it's the ability for their new uh, GPUs to support uh, headsets with a wider field of view, which is so critical. These types of tools are so important because just two years ago, it was developers and engineers figuring out how to make their content work for these different headsets. Now you have the major players that are investing in these tools that are actually fairly easy to use that you don't have to worry about that. Um, and once plugged in or dropped into whether your PC or laptop, the end user also doesn't have to worry about that. And the Amazon Sumerian uh, efforts, and I think they're going to do a talk about this a little later, or not, so I'll let them talk about it. But why this is exciting to me, for the past couple of years, we've talked about growth. And in the first days of, of kind of VR, you had an indie game development kind of growth. Love the indie community. I don't think VR would be where it's at today if it wasn't for them. Um, they not only are they just ingenious in figuring out new things, but they brought a lot of the best practices of UI and UX to VR. And then we saw game developers get on board for VR. And then we saw a lot of Unity and Unreal developers kind of get on board. But I think with Amazon Sumerian, now you're starting to see the largest group of developers, which is just developers, right? Software developers getting involved in VR. And that's a major milestone uh, in terms of the path for growth for VR. And that's a great proof point, because when Amazon invests in something, there's, there's definitely a reason and an opportunity. So where does that literally leave us? Um, I kinda, I think the way I look at it, it really leaves us with community. Um, you don't have to be a major company to really get involved and adopt these platforms, right? So it is really about kind of us working together, really in associations like the VR ARA, really getting us together and really asking the tough questions. It's not about whether or not, hey, what are, are you working on the next killer app? But are we making our platforms robust enough? Are we really focusing on addressing the main pain points for the industry? And how can we do that together? Um, I think it's totally fair to challenge the major companies of the, uh, of the industry to how are you making development easier for me? How are you making deployment easier for me? And how are you helping me to solve the major problems for the company? Um, and that's what the community is super important. And I want to kind of leave it with kind of one last note. Um, I talked about the Model T earlier. And it's really a quote from Henry Ford. If everyone is moving forward together, then success takes care of itself. And I feel like that's, at the end of the day, a good definition of a really good platform. Well, that's it for me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys.